Um, we've already looked at pec major and how it contributes that the anterior wall of the axilla. And if you look at the posterior border of the axilla down here, um, this is going to be a combination of both latissimus dorsi and teres major. Um, obviously down here getting into the arm, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but within this space you can also feel a couple of different muscles. Um, if you're um, feeling against the ribs, you're actually feeling the muscle serratus anterior. Um, and then if we go sort of in the same direction and downwards, kind of feeling down on the anterior surface of the scapula, um, that's where we're going to be able to find subscapularis. Um, and again, like the looser your arm is, the better, because um, I shouldn't be trying to force my way through your muscles. <laughs> Indeed, you should not. <laughs> It's much easier to get to when he's from prone. the other position. Yeah. Exactly. And we'll we'll do a um, subscapularis maneuver from the prone position. But um, let's look at for one more thing in the axilla. Mm -hmm. um, the neurovascular bundle in the axilla, um, well, you can certainly feel a pulse in there from your axillary artery. Um, so you know you're in the right place if you're feeling that. Um, but that whole big cord of structures, it's big, you know, probably an inch and a half across, um, contains the entire brachial plexus and then, of course, all the vasculature to the upper limb. Um, and that's a, a possible source of compression, from what I understand, um, because this is a really tight location with the several muscles around. So are there any situations where that um, shows up as a pain syndrome or a numbness syndrome? What I find is if people have numbness or tingling in the thumb, index finger, and, and maybe half of the middle finger, um, I often will find that if I work pectoralis major and minor, that tingling goes away and stays away. Sure, uh, maybe a median nerve. Problem. Yeah, I, I think it is. Mm -hmm. I think it's the median nerve. Um, but I, I also think that if the pectoralis minor is pulling hard on that coracoid process, then the scapula is getting pulled forward mm -hmm. and down. Um, and I think that compresses the, uh, perhaps the nerves in the sure. axillary region then. The bones, it's, the bone itself. The bone itself yeah. sure. can do that. Sure. Um, and of course, if people are feeling numbness or tingling or pain, uh, f neural kind of pain in their hands, um, there are several places, you know, from the neck through the shoulder, the elbow, and the carpal tunnel. Of course. These are all places that uh, those nerves can be being compressed and causing that feeling. So uh, a massage of the entire region is important. And the, sure. whole, the whole idea, the whole way that massage works to uh, get rid of neural pain is to make space for those nerves to communicate freely and clearly in the spaces that they go. All right, so uh, moving down to the arm, um, I think it's helpful to start by mapping out posterior and anterior. Um, if we're in this sort of a position, if you find that pulse, then you're looking, you're feeling the brachial artery. We've transitioned from axillary, axillary artery to brachial artery. Um, and that sort of groove represents the gap between the anterior compartment and then the posterior compartment. The tubercles and the epicondyles of the humerus are some deeper structures that um, can be trickier to find, I think. Um, the epicondyle, uh, or the, sorry, the tubercles at the proximal end, if you can find the position of the acromion, um, and then just find where that ledge is, where it ends, and then just drop off the ledge and try and get your thumb all the way down to the bone, on the proximal end of the humerus. That's good you're using your thumb pad. My whole thumb, right? <laughs> you are. <laughs> and then um, just take that arm and kind of rotate it, um, and then you'll feel where there's a bony prominence and where there's not. Right. And the, the prominence that's moving um, on the lateral side is going to be the greater tubercle, 
which is where most of your rotator cuff is attaching. And then um, the one that's a little bit more anterior is going to be the lesser tubercle where the subscap is attaching. And then the space in between is that bicipital groove. Um, so uh, again, a helpful checkpoint for all of those rotator cuff muscles because they all are attaching right in that area. As well as pec major is also attaching in that area. Right. As is lat dorsi. So that's like ground zero. It is. It totally <laughs> is. That's why it's such a puzzle. It is. To figure out what is going on when a person's shoulder hurts. It's So if we get down to the elbow region, um, the bony landmarks, um, I think on the medial side is a little easier, the medial epicondyle. If you just feel right in there, it should just pop right out at you. Right. It shouldn't be hard to find at all. Um, the lateral epicondyle is a little harder to feel. It doesn't pop out quite as much. Um, but if you just kind of work the uh, forearm into flexion and extension, you should be able to feel that point of rotation yep. um, pretty easily. Um, and then right in the middle, um, this is uh, this diamond shape here is what we consider the cubital fossa. And in that space, um, you should be able to feel, again, a pulse where your brachial artery is transitioning to the radial and the ulnar. And the, that um, brachial pulse should be just medial to, there it is, just medial to the bicep tendon. Um, so those, that structure you should be able to feel in there. Um, and if we kind of look at this musculature in the forearm, um, anything that's like if you sort of put your thumb down into that little gap, you got muscle on the lateral side, and you got muscle on the medial side. All this stuff on the medial side that's coming down off this medial epicondyle, that's all forearm flexors. that are all flexing the fingers, flexing the wrist, flexing the thumb, all this musculature that's in this mass. If we're over on this side, then we're talking about something completely different. Now we're working with brachioradialis on this side. Um, and then on the posterior side of the forearm, obviously, that's where we've got, from the lateral epicondyle coming down this way, um, is the extensors All of the, the forearm. All the extensors, right. So the first thing we want to do is, uh, you know, get some oil on your hands and then just scoop that arm up, pull it out and just lean back. This is a good opportunity for you to stretch your back a little bit, squeeze your glutes and relax your back. And, um, and then release the traction a little bit to uh, Warm up the tendons of the of the hand here and fingers. One finger at a time, just warming and soothing. Is this feeling good to you, Matt? Yes. Good. Mm -hmm. And now most people grip more than they extend in their lives. So these muscles that you were talking about in here, these grippy muscles, are going to be by far the tensor of the bunch, but they might not be the most painful. A lot of people will feel tenderness in their extensors, uh, again, kind of like the pectoralis and uh, scapular situation. Uh, we've, got, we've got muscles pulling. Mm -hmm. the bones around and if uh, some muscles that are wimpier have to be 
constantly holding on, then they are going to get sore. Mm -hmm. um, and usually the extensors are the wimpier of the arm muscles. Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> yep. So you want to soften those and soothe them with the hand in this position. So you're kind of, again, creating some slack here in those extensor muscles. Soothing them and soothing them. And then when you get into the flexors, go ahead and flex the, the wrist. And then extend it as you massage those muscles. So just, again, what we're doing is just lengthening muscles that perhaps have gotten shortened because of so much contraction. So that's one way to do that. Another way to do that is like this. Just sliding down and then squeezing on your way back up. And you can see perhaps that my whole body is moving. Mm -hmm. um, if we as a society were more okay with moving our whole selves, uh, when we were doing something, we would be a lot more comfortable in our lives. <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to encourage you to do that while you're here working on people's arms. Use your whole self. Yeah, so the deltoid um, is a situation. I'm just going to hold his arm up here on the table with my knee and uh, play with this deltoid a little bit because it's pretty tight. <laughs> How's that deltoid feeling to you? Good. Is it sore? It's a little tight. Mm -hmm. Are you feeling it more in the anterior portion here or in these lateral fibers that come down here? I think it might be more lateral. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you can just relax your arm there on my belly? Mm -hmm. Good. So I'm just working that those lateral fibers of the deltoid with my fingers in there. And is that feeling good to them? Yes. So anytime you can figure out a way to create slack in a muscle, and I know they don't really slacken up, but but to um, I guess it's passive contraction is right. what I'm doing. Uh, it makes the muscle more malleable. Mm -hmm. um, and anytime you can do that, you are going to be able to get deeper into that muscle and be more effective with your massage. Mm 